Hey everyone, welcome back to the Poplar Report. Just over a week ago, uh, Alexander Lushenko, who is the president of Belarus, which is loosely and codependent uh, with a uh, bear country over there, they have not taken active participation in the invasion of Eastern Europe there, but they are supporting it. And so it's kind of like how NATO's not really in the fight, but kind of is. Belarus uh, is kind of in the fight. They're using uh, their air bases and stuff like that to uh, launch attacks, but uh, Belarus armed forces have not been participating in that. However, last Friday, President Lushenko said, I am ready to fight with the Russians from the territory of Belarus in only one case. If even one soldier comes into the territory of Belarus to kill my people. If they commit aggression against Belarus, the response will be most severe and the war will take on a completely different nature. And you say that's okay. What's that? And then just yesterday morning, Sunday morning, explosions occurred at the, I can't even pronounce that, Machulishki, Machulishki Air Base uh, near Minsk, Obla uh, in Minsk Oblast, just outside the capital city in Belarus on Sunday morning. Two explosions, locals reported hearing two explosions around 9 to 8 a.m. And, uh, and may have heard another one during the night. So possibly three explosions. Uh, after a preliminary report, um, it's always suspicious when they, they immediately know who did it. Like, Immediate. No one's claiming it, but all the reports, they immediately know who did it because the regular um, mouthpieces of the United States empire immediately start spouting who it was because it's definitely that. But a Russian, uh, basically an AWACS plane, a airborne radar uh, aircraft was seriously damaged and... Uh, the whole front part of the airplane and the, uh, the, uh, the radar section was uh, damaged. Uh, also, some, uh, some support vehicles were also damaged in this explosion. But, of course, have no fear because Radio, F Radio Free Europe, which is basically a front for the U.S. State Department and the CIA, have said immediately that... Uh, this was BIPOL. Uh, it is B-Y-P-O-L. And basically it's this um, group of people that are uh, organized inside Belarus against the, uh, the, the, the Russian use of the air bases and, and their alliance with Russia. And so uh, the, they're coming out there. Now they... Interestingly enough, there is some prep work done here. Just earlier in the week, uh, Radio Fu Free Europe primed the pump, said uh, the Supreme Court of Belarus has labeled the group BIPOL, uh, which uh, unites former law enforcement officers who support opposition politicians as a terrorist organization. Just days later, they are now clearly responsible uh, for sabotaging or um, actually, sorry, using drones to attack the uh, airbase and attacking these Russian, this Russian plane and uh, the things. So we have the president of Belarus say, if we're attacked on our soil, we will enter the war. And then we have these explosions on their soil. Now, there is not yet an official response by uh, President Lushenko. He is uh, prepping to head to uh, China on Tuesday. On Tuesday, he will arrive in China. And that is... Uh, what, what's, what's up with that? It seems like the prep work is being laid for a, an alliance between Belarus, China, and Russia. It looks like China may be getting ready to enter the war. Um, this is just 
Lots of things are happening right now, but uh, just before his, uh, his trip to, to China, we have this, this big instigation. Will they respond? They've just had an airstrike done on them. And supposedly by separatists and opposition forces and terrorists within the country. But we all know where they got those drones. We all know where they got the money from. Um, the, there are reports of uh, Belarus was um, complaining about how, uh, let's see here, Belar this is in the Jerusalem Post. Belarus says Ukraine army groups massed at their border, risking its security. So they're, they're complaining about Ukrainian army troops uh, basically right on their border massing. Now, listen, uh, I'm not, I am certainly not on the side of anyone. Uh, Belarus is, is a tyrannical regime. We all know that. Uh, same thing with Russia. Uh, they're not good places. And, uh, you know, they're, they're allowing the Russians to use their air bases to attack uh, Ukraine. I mean, it, and anyone trying to claim that they're a third party to this, but then letting their air bases be used to stage military aircraft and uh, drones and bombers out of their, their place, and then they're taking off from there and attacking, uh, that's just, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's a little rich coming from you. So Belarus is, is playing war, but they don't want to get into the war. And it looks like forces beyond their reach are trying to drag them into this war. Uh, whether it's uh, Russia trying to get Belarus uh, tip over the scale. Um, maybe this was a black, uh, uh, a black flag by, uh, by, by Russia. Maybe this was uh, um, U Ukraine uh, attacking a legitimate military target in Belarus. Um, maybe this is Western powers instigating this within Belarus to try to destabilize uh, their country from the inside. I don't know what's going on. It, with this shadow war, it's hard to say whose angle and who's benefiting from this and who's not benefiting from this, but we're playing a dangerous game. Uh, all of the countries involved are just everybody's moving towards towards World War III and nobody's backing down. Nobody's stepping back and saying, hey, let's talk this out. Right now, they're playing the game for who gets China on their team when this whole thing kicks off. And it looks like they're trying to get them on their team. And, and we all kind of know their natural inclination is to side with with Russia and Belarus and, and those people. Um, a catastrophic World War III scenario is going to be horrible for everybody. It's going to be horrible for everybody. I don't, I don't know who's going to win, but is there really any winning when you talk about large-scale war like this? We've been trying to have this Afghanistan-type situation in Eastern Europe, but us getting dragged into it with all of our European allies and, and it just turning into a World War I scenario where everybody just gets pulled in through their alliances is, is very much looking like it's in the cards here. Keep a sharp eye on what's happening in Belarus because this could trigger the next stage. Of course, if they come in openly into the, into the war, um, that, is going to, that is going to change things. Uh, their troops aren't the best. They, they aren't highly equipped. They're not highly trained. But them opening up that whole front uh, to the north of Eastern Europe is going to really uh, cause a lot of problems for all the, uh, the military planners there uh, that are trying to defend that territory. It's going to be a nightmare scenario. And of course, that brings uh, Belarus into the fight right up against NATO's border, against the, uh, the Balkan states, against, uh, against Poland, and it just, it's not a good situation over there. So keep your eyes peeled on that. Please do be getting more prepared for things. This 
escalating significantly could have a very damaging impact on the stock markets as well. So financial preparation as well. Think through all that. Uh, the only thing that's going to go up in the coming months, it looks like, is going to be gold and, and precious metals and stuff like that as people flee to security because they're going to get afraid. Um, we're not all about being afraid. We're about getting prepared so you don't have to be afraid. And you taking steps now will allow you to be calm and confident when other people are losing their heads. They're losing their minds and you are able to think clearly and take practical steps because you have, you have some uh, room to maneuver. All right, folks, if you found this video useful or helpful, you might want to check out this other video from me right over here. I'll see you over there or I'll see you later. Steve Poplar out.